we're having an interesting discussion about something that is affecting a lot of people in Fiji today, and that's HIV. And uh, I'm here with the Permanent Secretary for Health, uh, Dr. James Fong. Uh, we were talking about how uh, you know it's difficult to have the discussion about sex um, in families and uh, how it, it's uh, better managed and uh, better facilitated overseas. I'm now going to move into what, what are the health ministry's plans to try and reduce the number of cases. Do we have uh, awareness campaigns planned? Are we going to rope in uh, you know, rugby stars? Or is, there, is there anything that the government is planning? Is uh, again, uh, it is part of that uh, what I discussed about uh, multi-sectoral response. Eh? Right. Uh, we did have previously we had a quite a robust awareness program yes. that engaged uh, rugby players and various uh, um, uh, uh, members of the community that were held in high regard. Right. The the, the problem that I had was that there was it, it did not fall into a sustainable framework. Okay. Where, uh -huh. you know, there were key initiators of action that had to be held accountable right. for outputs. Yes. And it's to a large extent, we'll have to get that back in again, okay. but through the lens of a multi-sectorial uh, response. So right. this is why having the Permanent Secretary Forum right. allows us to have a better governance structure where we can ensure that uh, awareness programs are inserted yes. into various government programs. Okay, that will that that gives us. And uh, I think even better is the fact that government themselves, through the office of the prime minister, mm. have made it an imperative right. that HIV/AIDS is uh, dealt with as a whole of government uh, exercise. Right. So this is uh, that that provides us that governance lens yes. that allows us to hold people accountable right. for ongoing action and not for to let it uh, fall through. Eh? Right. Right. But I think just to be clear, hmm. the other thing that we will also have to run through is the screening program. Yes. Once we've got the awareness going, then we will have to start doing a lot more screening. Right. The thing is, I think the, in terms of, of, of uh, people who are watching this space, yes. They need to understand that once we start screening, the numbers will go even higher. Yeah, right. Mm. And that, you know, for us, the numbers going up is a positive thing. Right. Because it creates visibility over the size of the problem mm. and it gives us more hope mm. in actually mitigating the rise in cases. Okay. When we see the cases rising from the new screening program. Right. So we're working on sorting out a screening program where people get registered. Yes. The positives will be linked to a treatment program that will allow us to suppress the viral load. Right. The negatives will get linked to an ongoing support program that allows them to be tested more routinely. Right. A lot of the screening will need to be targeted yes. to specific uh, groups. So not national screening, you know. It, it, it's, it's a national screening it's national program. Screening it's a national screening program, but right. I mean, we will still have to be targeted to some extent. Right. We cannot just continuously screen every single person. Right. We do, uh, to be realistic, we need to be targeted so that we can get as many positives out as positive as possible. All right. Okay. The problem is that if we start dealing with a low risk population, mm -hmm. then it may mean that we have missed opportunity within the high risk population. Okay. So we do need to make sure that we target the high-risk population, get as many positives as possible, yeah. reduce their viral load, right. and ensure that they live so long mm -hmm. that they will not uh, succumb to HIV AIDS, right. but they will just live their whole life as mm -hmm. is possible at this point in time. Right. So, you know, when you're saying high-risk uh, population, what, what uh, population? Oh, this is... Uh, this is why this is where this discussion about stigma comes up, eh? right? Yeah, because right. it means that uh, the high risk population have to be more visible. Right. Men who have sex with men need to be more visible. Right. Uh, uh, men, uh, people who indulge in unsafe sexual behavior need to be more visible. Right. So that they can get routinely tested. Right. And they need to be supported to to be. We need to be less judgmental as to why they do that. Right. We need to be less judgmental about why they do that, they, why they indulge in that behavior. Uh, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, yeah. 
you know the final judgment is upon yes he who decides that's right uh, <laughs> it's not on us yes so we just have to deal with what we got right and if we are less judgmental if we can reduce the stigma there's less judging yes that means that we get, get better access into the minority groups okay or the so-called minority groups right or the hidden groups better more for uh, for better for a better word right. and then that allows us to escalate the screening program right. to actually pick up as many as possible okay okay uh, you know given how hiv is spread and uh, as you mentioned through unprotected sex but it's also spread through the sharing of needles yes uh, you know so should there be a targeted campaign for children teenagers drug uh, people who do use drugs and is that being done yeah the this is a I must admit, this is another difficult area right. because it's a relatively new area for us, although it's been well known for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, support programs for those who fall into that sort of uh, substance abuse. Eh? Yes. And uh, support programs for people who, have, who, who indulge in substance abuse, including uh, IV drugs, right. needs to include uh, the ability to screen mm -hmm. if they are indulging in that behavior. Right. Um, again, it does require a lot more work in terms of trying to ensure that they can come forward. Right, yes. That's and that's, yeah. uh, that's going to be the challenge. Mm -hmm. The other possibility is, and this is one of the reasons why the HIV program has uh, peer group leaders right. that are, that, or peer group ch champions. Right because then they can access the, those groups mm -hmm. better and ensure that they get screened more regularly. Okay, so that's the approach you're going to... Yes, that has to be the approach. Uh, that, I mean, mm -hmm. trying to reduce uh, the... Get, getting them screened, ensuring that we know they are positive and then getting them treated to the point that they cannot transmit it. Right. Is, uh, you're is using uh, ARTs? Is yes, that, uh, ARTs, yes. Okay. Um, in the late 80s and 90s, even early 2000s, you know, uh, when I was a younger person, mm. uh, we were scared of HIV. As soon as you see the word HIV, you hear it AIDS. You don't even want to indulge in any activity that might get you, you know. So what, what happened? Why did that campaign just like die away? Uh, I touched on it before, but mm. to some extent, at that time we had access to Global Fund right. for HIV AIDS and it was, we were supporting a lot of our activities. Okay. I think uh, Fiji went up to become, uh, you know, socioeconomically when our standing went up, yes. we fell out of the Global Fund uh, oh, okay. uh, area and then we were supposed to sustain the programs ourselves. Right. That's just one. Right. That's not the main, you know, there are a number of factors, uh, but I think the main factor is the fact that the service delivery model that we had developed yes. to sustain uh, multi-sectorial action mm. was not escalated high enough for it to be sustained over a longer period of time. Right. It was, uh, we have, we had at that time, we built up uh, the National Advisory Committee on AIDS, NACA. Right. And uh, whilst uh, NACA was, uh, the, the concept is good, the effectiveness of that entity right. to sustain the drive on awareness and various other programs yes. was uh, probably not given enough power at that time. Okay. And uh, right now, because of the current push by the Prime Minister and uh, members of, of, uh, of uh, Parliament, right. so this, uh, actually, the current push, it gives us that opportunity to recreate a more sustainable deli uh, service delivery more, uh, mechanism. Right. Okay. Uh, and that it includes the, what the permanent secretaries are setting up at this moment in time. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, given the reported numbers are quite high, mm. what is your message to people, to young people, even, even uh, we're finding, uh, you know, not even young people, even uh, older people and youths who may be walking around unaware that they have HIV. Yes. Hmm? Yes, I think uh, my first, the first message I would put out to the general population is that first we need to be more caring to the groups that are most, like, are most vulnerable right. to HIV AIDS. 
the groups that are most vulnerable to HIV, we really need to show more care. Okay. We need to be less judgmental. Right. And this is including all our spiritual groups, everybody. Right. Yes. Um, at the end of the day, while we do preach, uh, there's a lot of preaching on abstinence. Yes. We have to understand that life that is not equal for everybody. Yes. There are some people who will have to indulge or in unhealthy sexual behavior for various reasons. Right. That are beyond our ability to understand. Yes. Unhealthy sexual behavior is a reality. Yes. And we need to be able to support people to engage in that area as safely as possible. Right. Because if we don't allow them to engage as safely as possible, it will reach into the household. Yes. HIV AIDS will penetrate. We've got small children now who are born uh, from mothers who are positive. Right. Whilst we have a very good program to reduce the risk of transmission to the child. Yes. At the end of the day, we cannot reduce it to complete zero. Mm. And see, the child is an innocent party in this matter. Yes. So it is important that we be more caring to those who are vulnerable to HIV AIDS right. so that the discussion can ensure better screening, mm -hmm. better penetration to treatment, yeah. a better ability for follow-up, and to ensure that they become as negative as possible. And those in the vulnerable groups, even if they test negative, we need to be have a program for ongoing screening amongst them. Right. So I mean, my, my, my message really is about the idea of supporting the yeah. program, yes. with, but with a more compassionate uh, component to right. the support. Um, it does require that we have to work with all the other multi-sectoral groups, yes. all the other ministries, in ensuring that when they deliver the message of awareness, mm. they do it with more compassion and care. Right. It must not come across as being judgmental. Mm. And then it means that all of us, we need to re redo the way that we think, the mindset that we use, to ensure that uh, we can access those who need our care better. Right. Um, of course, to the young people, you know, the, the important thing is that they, they do need to be fully informed right. of the risks that they are incurring when they indulge in unhealthy sexual behavior. Yes. And they need to be fully informed about what they can do to reduce their risk. Right. Yeah. Uh, of course, as I said, the best and the one that will give us the maximum value is abstinence. Right. But for many of us, we need to understand that that's not a realistic goal. Right. We can preach it as long as we uh, as we can, but it, it's not realistic. Right.